Good evening, boys and girls, and tonight's bedtime story, I've decided to read a chapter book, and my granddaughters just love stories about horses. They have horses, and today I noticed that when Amira was in her group today, she had a horse with her, so as I was cleaning out my stuff, getting ready for my big move, I thought, wow, look at this. I think Amira would love this story, so I decided why not read a chapter book this week? So this is called Sheltie and the Snow Pony. <clears throat> chapter one. Brr, Emma shivered in her thick jacket. The wind outside was cold enough to freeze her breath. She stood on the front step and hugged herself to keep warm. Looking up to the sky, she blew white frosty puffs into the air. On the ground, everything as far as Emma could see was covered in a dusting of white. Tough time with the pages. Jack Frost was busy last night, she said. She pulled up her collar and crunched her way across the grass to the paddock. Two small ears pricked up expectantly from a wild, unruly mop of frosted forelock, and a pair of gentle brown eyes twinkled brightly as Emma approached. Shelty, her little Shetland pony, stood waiting with his fuzzy chin resting on the top bar of the wooden gate. Shelty could see the apple that Emma was holding. He blew a snort, and she scratched him hard between his ears. Good morning, boy. Look what I've got for you. The apple was soon gone as Shelty munched happily, pushing his soft nose into Emma's gloved hand, looking for more. Emma swung her legs over the fence and walked with Shelty to his field shelter. Sheltie walked close and kept nudging Emma playfully with his muscle. Muzzle, sorry, his nose. Emma nudged Sheltie back, but as she leaned into him, Sheltie suddenly skipped sideways and Emma sat down with a bump. Ow, Emma laughed. You're obviously full of tricks this morning, Sheltie. Then as Emma sat on the frosty grass, she felt something cold touch her face. It was a snowflake landing gently on her cheek. Oh, Sheltie, said Emma, it's snowing. Sheltie looked up to the sky at the fine white snowflakes floating down from the clouds. Emma broke the ice on Sheltie's water trough and fished out the frozen pieces with her trowel. Come on, Sheltie, breakfast. Emma scooped the pony mix into the feed manger and watched as Sheltie woofed it down. Sheltie liked his food. If Emma wasn't careful, she would have a pony that was as fat as a barrel. Your trouble is that you're spoiled rotten, said Emma. You've got everything you could possibly wish for, don't you? Sheltie gave Emma a mischievous look, then nuzzled up closely and shut his eyes contentedly. Emma gave Sheltie a kiss. His thick winter coat smelled of fresh air and snow, and he looked just like a big cuddly toy. After filling Sheltie's hay rack, Emma went back indoors for her own breakfast. And look, there's a picture of Emma and Sheltie. A cute little pony. My mom had a pony. His name was Tony the Pony. <laughs> he was mischievous as well. The kitchen was warm and cozy with pine cupboards and a bright red gingham curtains. Bacon sizzled on the grill and the smell made Emma's mouth water as she stepped inside out of the cold. After breakfast, mom asked, what are you going to do today, Emma? Dad's taking me and Joshua shopping in Rochester. Do you want to come? Emma liked going out with mom and dad, but she would rather take Sheltie out for a ride in the snowy countryside any day. I thought I might take Sheltie out over the field, said Emma, to see if it's been snowing up there. Poor old Sheltie, mom laughed. I bet he'd much rather stay in his nice, comfortable paddock. No, he wouldn't, said Emma. Anyway, I'm keeping him fit. Exercise is good for ponies. Mom didn't dare argue. You're right, she said. When it comes to Sheltie, Emma, you always know best. Mom, Dad, and Joshua left for Rochester soon after breakfast. Emma put on an extra sweater under her jacket and wrapped her favorite scarf around her neck. Then she adjusted her riding hat, fixed the strap under her chin, and went out to tack up Sheltie. The paddock gleamed white beneath its light covering of snow. Sheltie pranced and snorted, pawing a hole in the snow with his hoof. The little pony was eager to be off. He loved going out, whatever the weather. 
Emma walked Sheltie out into the lane. Then they crossed the snow-covered meadow at a trot as they headed for Bramblewood and the fields beyond. The freezing wind made Emma's eyes run and her face turned pink, but Sheltie didn't seem to feel the cold at all. His thick hairy coat and shaggy mane kept him nice and warm. Emma crouched low over Sheltie's neck as she rode him faster across the fields. It hadn't been snowing much up there after all. Sheltie's hooves drummed the hard ground. We're going to win, Sheltie, we're going to win. Emma was pretending that they were in a race. She was so lost in her game that she didn't pay attention to where she was heading. Sheltie finally slowed down to a walk. <coughs> Where are we, Sheltie? Emma looked around. She suddenly realized that they were in the East Meadow. Emma urged Sheltie to follow a path that wound its way through a valley. The valley would lead them back to Barrow Hill and the village of Little Applewood where Emma lived. Before long, they were riding in the valley and following a bridle path that suddenly forked off in two directions. Emma knew that one path led to the village. She wasn't sure where the other path led. Come on, Sheltie, let's go exploring. Sheltie sniffed at the air. Then he shook out his mane and jangled his reins, eager to follow the new path. Uh oh, bum, bum, bum. I wonder what is going to be down the new path. Well, we're going to have to wait until tomorrow to find out when we read chapter two. Have a good evening, everybody.